Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. On Friday, the CDC announced new mask wearing guidelines for communities where COVID-19 is easing its grip. CDC officials say most Americans live in places where healthy people can safely take a break from wearing masks. More than 70% of the U.S. population lives in counties where the coronavirus is posing a low or medium threat to hospitals. Those are the people who can stop wearing masks for now. The agency is still advising that people, including school children, wear masks where the risk of COVID-19 is high. The new recommendation doesn't change the requirement to wear masks on public transportation or on planes. Earlier this month, Massachusetts recommended masks only for unvaccinated people and for those with underlying conditions or other risk factors. The statewide mask mandate in Massachusetts schools ended on February 28th. In recent reports, fewer people are getting vaccine booster shots in the U.S., according to new federal data. The CDC estimates that the seven-day average for booster shots administered daily was about 149,000 on February 19th, which is down from a little more than a million in early December when Omicron was first detected in the U.S. The agency says about half of booster-eligible people have gotten one so far. As the Omicron COVID surge has started to decline, public health officials and researchers say they don't want people to lose a sense of urgency and leave themselves unprepared for another potential ramp up in cases or possible new variants in the future. CDC data shows that boosters help limit infections and the severity of cases and hospitalizations when compared with vaccinated people who, who aren't vaccinated or boosted. The federal agency has also found that boosted people have the lowest rates of COVID-19 deaths. On Thursday last week, data released by the Massachusetts Department of Public Health revealed that Braintree's COVID metrics dropped once again. The positivity rate in the town decreased from 4.4% to 3.1%. Braintree had 95 cases in the last two weeks or 17.1 daily cases per 100,000 residents. The report also showed the town's vaccination rate is at 78.7% and close to 45% have even gotten their booster. Overall, the state has also seen a decrease in their positivity rate as it dropped to 2.2%. The state is still monitoring and reporting health trends as cases continue to grow. From Friday's report, over 79,000 molecular tests were conducted and 1,329 new positive cases were reported. Currently, 483 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 93 are in the ICU. 29 new deaths were also reported. The town of Braintree will also continue to monitor COVID data from the state. In the last week, Braintree Town Hall reported only 13 new COVID-19 cases. The Town Hall website currently shows 9,435 positive cases in total. There have been no new fatalities reported in 10 months, keeping Braintree's total deaths at 136. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. Welcome back. Early Sunday morning, around 4 a.m., four people were transported to the hospital following a head-on collision on Washington Street near Route 37 at Arb Arbutus Ave in Braintree Highlands. Braintree police are still investigating the crash and the conditions of those involved have not yet been released. Braintree Public Schools conducted a parent survey to see how parents view the effectiveness of the district's homework policy, and thousands of parents responded. Superintendent Jim Lee said they received about 2,100 responses to the survey and are still in the process of compiling the results. 
During the February 7th school committee meeting, Interim Assistant Superintendent Courtney Miller said the survey was put out so school officials can see if changes need to be made to the homework policy. Miller also said that depending on the survey results, they'll be referred to the school's committee policy and education subcommittee for review. Lee said survey results should be ready to share this week. According to Massachusetts State Police, a Braintree man was among six people arrested in commercial sexual exploitation sting. Mohammed Hussein of Braintree, along with Joey Gonzalez Villanueva of Revere, Christian Reyes of Lawrence, Daniel Eaton of Melrose, Jesus Enyosa of Saugus, and John Forno of Lynn, were arrested and charged with sexual conduct for a fee. State police said the sting operation involved police officers posing online as escorts at a hotel in the Revere area. The six men arrived at the hotel after previously agreeing to commercial sex with undercover officers. In a statement, the Massachusetts State Police said, quote, The Massachusetts State Police and its local and federal law enforcement partners are committed to the apprehension of perpetrators of sexual exploitation and the safe recovery of victims of sex trafficking, end quote. Last Tuesday, Braintree's licensing board suspended the liquor license of TGI Fridays located at 60 Forbes Road for one day after finding the restaurant served a drunk off-duty employee. Police said the incident happened back in December of 2021 when they received a report of a woman rolling on the ground in the parking lot. The woman, a server at the restaurant, was taken to South Shore Hospital for treatment. During Tuesday's hearing, it was discovered the woman had two or three cocktails and two tequila shots before the bartender cut her off. By a vote of four to one, the board found the restaurant guilty of serving an intoxicated person. Town clerk James Casey, who chairs the board, cast the dissenting vote. He said he felt there was not enough evidence that the woman was served while intoxicated. TGI Fridays will serve the penalty on March 28th unless the restaurant appeals the decision to the State Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission. On Saturday, March 5th at 1 p.m., Troop 22 Braintree is inviting all boys grade 5 to 7 to join them at Braintree Town Hall to enjoy games and challenges such as tug-of-war, hot chocolate, and interactions with fellow scouts. This is a great opportunity for those interested to see what scouting is all about. For more information, you can visit troop22braintree.com or scoutsbsa.org. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. The COVID vaccine is free and highly effective. Most vaccines require two shots given three to four weeks apart to fully protect you. So be sure to get both. The vaccine is an important tool to protect you, your family, and your friends. Learn more. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into stories around Massachusetts and the South Shore. On Sunday, thousands of people took to the streets of Boston to protest Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The protest in Boston and around the world came on the same day that Russia was planning to put its nuclear weapons in ready mode. Various Ukraine support events converged at 1 p.m. in the public garden and made their way up Newberry Street, down Boylston, through the public garden to the State House. Holding up signs and chanting, no war and hands off Ukraine, the demonstration that was only supposed to draw hundreds brought more than 5,000 people together in the streets of Boston. Organizers of the march are also holding a drive to gather medical supplies for those in Ukraine. For more information, you can visit Sunflower of Peace on Facebook or Instagram. In an unexpected development, your favorite Girl Scout cookie may be in short supply. The Girl Scouts of Eastern Massachusetts sent a statement to cookie coordinators on Friday saying that national supply chain disruptions were affecting the availability of packaging resources and product ingredients. The local chapter of the Girl Scouts said it was informed by its national chapter and ABC Bakers that they have been experiencing production delays that will affect the availability of Girl Scout cookies for the remainder of their cookie program, which ends in Massachusetts on Friday, March 11th. The Girl Scouts of Eastern Massachusetts said anyone who wants to support the Girl Scout cookie sale and or wants to find a local booth sale in their area, please visit www.gcema.org. 
Weymouth Mayor Robert Headland said his administration is taking a holistic approach to improve Weymouth's shoreline. With planned projects to improve coastal resiliency, reduce flooding, upgrade boat ramps, and open up more of the coastline to residents, the projects include completing a final design for a seawall upgrade near Fort, Fort Point Road, eliminating flooding in a Lane Beach parking lot, and on River Street, and completing a long overdue dredging project in the back river near the Lane Beach parking lot, and replacing an adjacent boat ramp. Headland said those projects will go out to bid this spring, with construction scheduled to begin in late autumn and be completed by the end of 2024. The state grants and the town's host community agreement with Enbridge, operator of the natural gas compressor station near the Four River, will pay for the projects which will cost $6.5 million. The State Department of Housing and Community Development gave the Town of Weymouth a $75,000 planning grant to be used to improve Columbian Square. The town is currently looking for feedback from residents about experiences, ideas, and concerns about parking and land use in the square. Weymouth hired McCabe Enterprises to do a study, and the firm has put out a survey which asked residents about reasons for visiting and frequency of visits to the square, as well as thoughts and experiences with parking. You can take the survey at tinyurl.com slash Columbian Square. The town will use the information to develop a marketing and land use plan to assist with business growth and recruitment for the area. On March 1st, the Four River Bridge will be lit up in pink and purple to raise awareness of a rare disease. ALSP, or Adult Onset Leukoencephalopathy, is a rare and fatal neurological disease characterized by changes to certain areas of the brain, especially the white matter. Symptoms of ALSP usually begin in a person's 40s and worsen over time. Personality changes, including depression and a loss of social inhibitions, are among the early symptoms of the disease. Currently, there are no federally approved treatments for ALSP. March will be the first ever ALSP Awareness Month, and the Zacom and Longfellow Bridges in Boston and the Burns Bridge in Worcester will all be lit up. The Quincy Choral Society is having their annual Spring Pops concert and silent auction fundraiser on Sunday, March 13th. Doors open at 1.15 p.m. and the show begins at 2 p.m. Tickets are $15. You can attend this event located at the Quincy Catholic Academy at 370 Hancock Street in North Quincy. Be advised that masks are required and seats are limited due to social distancing. Thank you for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. The COVID-19 vaccine doesn't contain the virus, so you can't get COVID from the shot. You may experience things like muscle aches, fever, or tiredness, but these are most likely signs that your body is building immunity to protect against the virus. Learn more. Welcome back to Braintree Today. First up in entertainment, if you've ever wanted to see one of the Fab Four, then you're in luck. Paul McCartney is adding a second night to his Got Back tour visit at Boston's Fenway Park in June. The 13-city tour kicks off in April 28th and runs through June 16th. McCartney's original schedule had him playing at Fenway on June 7th for his fifth career performance at the home of the Boston Red Sox. Next in entertainment, the 2022 Oscars are just around the corner, and nominations were announced on February 8th. If you haven't taken a peek yet, here are some suggestions of the most overlooked portions in the three shorts categories, which includes animated, live action, and documentary. First up for animated shorts is Robin Robin, directed by Dan Ojari and Mikey Please. The short tackles issues of inclusivity as seen through the eyes of an orphaned Robin taken in by an accommodating family of felonous mice. Upon joining her new family and participating in the family business of swiping crumbs, her clumsiness threatens to bring down the whole enterprise. You can watch Robin Robin on Netflix. Next up for live action shorts, Please Hold, directed by K.D. Davila, tells the story of a young man whose life is suddenly and inexplicably derailed as he finds himself the victim of an entirely automated justice system that falsely imprisons him and renders him helpless to plead his case. You can watch P Please Hold on Amazon Prime Video. 
And finally, for documentary shorts, Three Songs for Benazir, directed by Gulliston and Elizabeth Merzai, tells a story over a four-year period in the life of a young Afghan, Shasta, and his wife who have been placed in a displacement camp near Kabul. While under constant surveillance by an American drone, we watch as Shasta is beaten down by a lack of job opportunities and dire living conditions. You can watch Three Songs for Benazir on Netflix. For more information and to find all of the Oscar nominations, you can visit Oscars.org. That'll do it for entertainment. Thank you for watching Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides, and that's all we have for news today. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.